The tier trial is, is interesting because I think it validates a lot of the uh, approaches that managed care has used uh, traditionally, such as starting with less intensive therapy like methotrexate, building upon that once you identify patients who are not responding in, a, in an optimal way or at least to the level that the clinician or the patient would hope. Uh, the methotrexate was added to uh, either a TNF or you also had um, uh, sulfazalazine added to methotrexate in order to improve the outcomes that were seen. Certainly that is a very logical clinical approach and I think that the trial validates a lot of the uh, messages that we've been sending out for managed care over the years to start with the more conservative therapy, move to the more aggressive slash intensive, but make sure that we're giving the patient an opportunity to respond at each step along the way. I think the TIER trial does validate the use of combination therapy, combination being methotrexate plus something like a TNF. It certainly substantiates the idea that as we build on that conservative therapy to more intense levels, that having uh, two agents in place might well give us the kind of outcomes that we're hoping to see. However, I think that it's also important to recognize that the validation of the combination therapy with the TIER trial also comes after they've been able to clearly demonstrate the importance of starting with monotherapy and making sure that we've given the patient an adequate time period to respond. Rheumatoid arthritis is a lifelong condition and the drugs that we use today have been able to demonstrate very impressive clinical improvements. At the same time, we all recognize that A, they're very expensive and B, certainly have potential for adverse events and tolerability issues. One of the challenges that we have with drugs coming to market for rheumatoid arthritis is the paucity of head-to-head -head data, understanding how does a new drug compare to the existing agents, is it better in a way that is going to be clinically meaningful as opposed to something that's simply statistically significant, how do we as an as a industry, as a profession, provide the kind of useful information for a clinician in the office to help him or her understand whether a new drug is one that he or she should be moving existing patients to or one that should be reserved either for certain subgroups of patients or only for new starts. That's a challenge and I'm not sure today we have an answer to that. Uh, hopefully over the next few years we'll see more and more head-to-head -head data come out Certainly one of the things that a lot of organizations are working on, a lot of third-party organizations are trying to develop is frameworks to understand the value of drugs, both existing drugs as well as new drugs, and value being that combination of clinical benefit as well as cost, so that all of us can understand what is the way to get the optimal clinical result for a cost that is going to be in line with that result. From a managed care perspective, our goal is to provide members with the optimal clinical care to provide access to all of the services that, that each member will need for their condition. In this case, we're talking about rheumatoid arthritis, and certainly one of the challenges in rheumatoid arthritis is not only the lifelong progressive nature of the condition, but also the cost, which has really driven it into the top category for most health plans as well as most employers in terms of drug costs. From a managed care perspective, the lines of therapy that come together to provide not only the optimal outcome, but also an outcome that's in line with the cost of that therapy is really what we're trying to achieve. Combination therapy, for example, with subcutaneous methotrexate certainly has a role. Uh, the role is really going to be defined by the clinical condition, the clinical scenario that we're talking about in terms of the, the aspects of the individual patient and, and the experience of that patient in terms of response to earlier lines such as oral methotrexate, uh, the addition of a TNF, and so on. Ultimately, I think the challenge for all of us, managed care, clinicians, employers, pharmaceutical companies, as well as consumers, is how do we identify the treatment options that are going to be best for individual patients, but also ones that are not going to deliver the optimal clinical outcome, but also do that at a cost that everyone believes and recognizes is in line with the clinical improvement. The future of rheumatoid arthritis is going to evolve, I believe, towards even more 
consumer-centric approaches. In other words, how do we make sure that the information that everyone is providing, all of the stakeholders, uh, is aligned with what the individual patient slash consumer needs to know in order to maximize his or her outcome. I think we're certainly seeing a shift away from more parenteral treatment uh, as more oral treatments come out uh, and those oral treatments on are, are on a par with the clinical results we've seen with the parenterals, the sub-Q, the IVs. That's going to, I think, drive a lot more focus on self-management by the individual. Again, of course, with the guidance of the physician, but breaking away from the mindset we had, say, 20 plus years ago, where every single patient had to be treated in a doctor's office frequently with an IV treatment that he or she may or may not really have understood. Uh, I think a lot of this is in line with also that drive towards value. How do we identify the treatments that are going to give the optimal outcome and be in line in terms of cost with what both consumers slash patients and society and employers recognize as having value. Certainly, we have a challenge with many chronic conditions such as rheumatoid arthritis in terms of the cost burden on society and on the economy as the population continues to age and we see that group of RA patients increase over time. It's going to be a challenge for everyone in the medical profession to make sure that we're providing the optimal care at a cost that, that is tolerable. However, I think that with a lot of the information that's being generated in terms of outcomes, in terms of how we align those outcomes with costs to create that value equation, I think we will have lots of opportunity in the future for driving towards the best outcomes we can hopefully achieve and at a cost that everyone agrees is acceptable and reasonable.